In May of 2023, Atlantic Council Chairman John F. W. Rogers and President and CEO Frederick Kemp traveled to Kyiv, Ukraine to present President Volodymyr Zelensky with the Global Citizen Award. While meeting with Ukrainian cabinet members, the Atlantic Council staff experienced Zelensky's leadership firsthand and witnessed all that he continues to do for the people of Ukraine. Thank you very much. Big privilege to meet you. And uh, of course, we are very thankful to the United States and the Atlantic Council and of course to Society of America for supporting Ukraine. Thank you very much that you help us to unite everybody and to, to in this war, war for real, for our independence and for our common freedom. Thank you very much. I'm here at the Atlantic Council. We've spoken about civilization and uh, the fight for freedom. And it's exactly that which we wish to honor the Ukrainian people and yourself and the leadership. We are pleased to honor him tonight and to salute his ongoing commitment to defending an independent and democratic nation. We are honored to continue our commitment to Ukraine's future, building on last year's Distinguished Leadership Award to the people of Ukraine as we honor President Zelensky tonight. Please welcome back Atlantic Council Chairman John F. W. Rogers. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my great honor to formally recognize Ukrainian President Zelensky for his fortitude and leadership for his country's heroic fight against authoritarian aggression, for his unyielding defense of the sanctity and the solidarity for democracies everywhere. The bravery and the resolve exhibited by Ukraine's soldiers and citizens alike has been nothing short of an inspiration to the world. It is something that I've witnessed firsthand. I had the privilege to meet with the President and his team on two separate occasions spanning the many months of this war. It was important that we went and signaled to Russia and other nations that we are committed to a free and independent Ukraine. And on these journeys, we had an opportunity to engage with many officials and leaders to discuss the situation on the ground and its ramifications globally. But due to the threats in the land and the air, the airport is closed. So consequently, months after the war began, I went by train from the Polish border to Kyiv. And for the first time since the fall of the Soviet Union, I was there. The windows of the train were taped to avoid shattered glass in the event of an explosion. And on that train, I saw many Ukrainian women and children who had fled, but they were returning to visit husbands and fathers and brothers. I shared a compartment with a family, a Ukrainian woman and her three-year-old son and her mother. And they were eager to reunite the boys with the boy's father, who had just received a few days of leave from fighting on the front lines. I also met an elderly couple, Ludmila and Victor. They were visiting their young daughter in Poland, whom they had not seen since the war started in February. They themselves would not leave their country. They said, if my president stays, I stay. I also met a young woman who was returning back to her hometown to see her only brother. He had recently been called up to serve in the army. She was filled with tears worried about her brother, not about her own safety, only about her brother. Now these and other tearful conversations set the tone for the rest of my trip. And as I stayed there thinking about the future, I was assured by what I saw in these people's eyes. Hope and courage and sacrifice. The human side and the toll of this war is captured in these everyday realities. We are living through the greatest period of uncertainty and unrest in more than two decades, driven in a significant way by the worldwide reverberations from the Russian war. As we navigate through, it is even more critical that we understand those moments, where it may lead, and each of our roles within it. At such a formidable time, there is no better example of the right leader at the right time rising to meet the moment than President Zelensky and his unwavering resolve. He has won the trust in the hearts of nearly every Ukrainian and much of the world, delivering a masterclass 
and communication and advocacy for a modern nation under primeval siege. Even as we present him with this award and honor his courage, we know that he accepts these accolades on behalf of and for the benefit of his people and his country. And when you think of the themes of civic virtue and the common good above self-interest, as I reflect upon the two leaders of these nations at war, the contrast could not be more glaring, the differences more stark. In Ukraine, everyday images of the reckless and unnecessary loss of life persist as Putin targets innocent civilians. His persona even ventures into the bazaar with art forms comparing him to Hercules. Our mythical monsters are replaced with modern adversaries such as a multi-headed hydra of Western sanctions. And in a contrasting worldview, President Zelensky at his inauguration instructed, I do not want my picture in your offices. The president is not an icon is not an idol or a portrait. Hang your kids' photos instead and look at them each time you are making a decision. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my honor and privilege to present to all of you the President of Ukraine and this year's recipient of the Global Citizens Award. Thank you very much. A great honor to be here. Um, uh, I didn't prepare a long speech. Sorry, too much for one day. And tomorrow I'll, I'll be in the White House, so I have to save energy. Um, I'm not here. I'm not alone here. I'm with my wife. I just want to see her. Yes, so, so somewhere. Somewhere, yeah, yeah, I see, I see, I see. That's great. First of all, and our team is there. Yes, uh, thank you so much that you invited us. Really, I don't have, in real life, I don't have, often, I don't have time to be near with my wife together, so thank you so much. Uh, yes, if you want to applause, please. <laughs> Thank you very much. Really, uh, to be serious and to be very honest, uh, this is not my award. And I address this award to all Ukrainian men and women in uniform. I address this award to all our sweet children who've been killed by Russian terrorists, and we'll never forget them. I address this word to all fathers, mothers who brought up so brave Ukrainian soldiers, and to all teachers and to all doctors who didn't leave the Ukraine from first days of full-scale war and been together with us taught our clever boys and girls, even under Russian missiles, taking Russian missiles and Iranian drones. And of course, I address this word to all the partners, United States, EU, all brave countries who've been with us and supported us. Thank you so much. And of course, I address uh, this award to all the people in the world who fight for freedom and democracy like we, we Ukrainians. Slava Ukraini. Yeah.
Thank you so much.